Hello Linux fans, Rob here, and today I want to talk about my number one favorite for 2019 daily driver distro. Boy, what a mouthful. And that is KDE Neon. I want to get into the specifics of why I love this distro and a lot of what I'm going to be talking about is going to be the KDE Plasma desktop. That's what makes up a large part of KDE Neon. So we'll talk about those specifics and if you're someone new to Linux and you're like what's this KDE Neon thing or KDE Plasma thing that is the desktop environment. In Linux you've got some main components. So Linux actually the name Linux for operating systems in general comes from the actual kernel so that's a component, a major component of the Linux operating system. And then you have a desktop environment. In this case, it's KDE Plasma. You also have GNOME, XFCE, and several others to choose from. And so that's another component. And then you have packages slash applications, and that's another component. And then there's some, I would say, sub-level components as well that all make up this Linux operating system that uh, many of us know and love. All right, but KDE Neon specifically for me is just that it's at a primo state right now. And so I'm going to go through some of those highlights. I'll bounce around a little bit. Uh, let's move over here to the KDE Plasma link. And we're talking about with this particular release that I have installed here, Plasma 5.17.1. And that's, uh, that point one's just a bug fix release that came out, I want to say about a week or so ago. Uh, and that's what we're running here. And I'll put the link here if you want to go through and see some of these fixes and updates on the uh, point one release specifically. But let's move back over to the uh, Plasma page here. And they're going to go through, if, if you're new, this is a great place to start. Um, you know, if you're watching this video and you go, wow, I want to really check this out. I've, n I've never really taken the time to look at this or to, to find out more about KDE. This is a really good place to start. Uh, moving on from there, I want to go over just, again, the main reasons for me personal. Uh, this, is, this is for my use and for what I do as a daily driver and, and why I think this is such a uh, fantastic distro. And so if you're not using this or you hate KDE, I get it. And that's the great thing about Linux is there's always a choice. And so I'm not saying that if you don't run this, there's something wrong with you. Just want to share this with you. And, you know, maybe uh, maybe it hits someone and they give it an opportunity. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about is speed and smoothness, just the overall speed and just the fluid feel of KDE in whatever you do, whatever you're working with, you know, if you're launching the file manager, things like that. Now, speed and smoothness are going to vary. It's also going to vary depending on the window effect settings that you have set up. If you're someone who likes all these various effects and fade in and fade out, and you've got an older system, then you might feel like it's not that fast and it's not that fluid. But in the case of a you know pretty well mediocre system, uh, nothing that is earth shattering. You know this is a an Intel Core i5, 12 gigs of RAM, and while in today's standards it's not a super powerhouse or anything like that, it handles KDE Plasma exceptionally well. Uh, and while we're here, we'll go ahead and take a quick look. So this again is 5.17.1 with QT version of 5.13.1. And the kernel is, eh, it's not that recent, but uh, 5.0 on the kernel. And that makes up the most recent release of KDE Neon. So speed, smoothness, it is there. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised at the rate of development going on for KDE slash Plasma, that this doesn't turn out to be one of the smoothest, quickest, lightest feeling desktop environments out there. And yes, I haven't forgot that XFCE exists, which is in its own right extremely fast and smooth. But I'm just I'm just telling you what I'm seeing here with each new release of the Plasma Desktop. Customization. You cannot talk about the Plasma Desktop and specifically KDE Neon without talking about customization. And the reason I keep going back to the KDE Neon thing is because it was designed from the get-go to make sure you're getting the most recent that KDE has to offer. And there's different levels of that that we'll talk about. But that's one of the reasons that I love the Neon side is because you're getting the, the, the most recent of what KDE is offering. 
So, uh, so that's great. Like, for example, here we've got uh, cust or global menu. So if we launch over here to Firefox again, you'll see global menu right here. And this is just one way to set up the panel. Uh, you could change whatever you want on this panel. It's, it's absolutely amazing with the customization that's in built in. You don't have to add plugins and various modules and, and add-ons like you do in the, and I'm going to pick on the GNOME desktop, for example. Let's talk about things like, you know, from the customization standpoint, theming. I believe that theming and setting up various themes works better in Plasma than any other desktop environment. And I have, trust me, I have tried them all. And so if you're someone who's into the theming and tweaking and really changing the look of your desktop environment, I suggest you, you give uh, KDE Plasma a look. So let's go into settings here. And we're just going to roll through this pretty quickly. But if you go under the appearance category, you've got a global theme. And if you want to add a ton of new themes and experiment, you can do that right here within settings. Um, you don't have to go out through the browser. You don't have to go out through a software center, although you can by using Discover, which we'll talk about later. And here you could sort by the newest, most downloads and install those new global themes right here. It couldn't get much easier. Uh, your plasma style. So here you've got a few preloaded. And if you wanted to add new plasma styles, same thing. You can add it right here from within the settings. Now, you're not going to find a lot of this pre-installed within KDE Neon because this is one of the reasons, another reason that I really like Neon specifically is it's a very light distro with minimal applications installed. It's really here as a base for you to build up the system as you see fit. And I love that about Neon. Application style. So let's move over here. And this is where you can tweak practically everything within your, uh, you've got Breeze, Fusion, um, you, you can go in and adjust those. So if we wanted to change that and give that a totally different look, when you get into the GTK side, and we'll go ahead and discard that, you can change those settings. And I want to talk about that for a minute. I use Evolution as my email handler. It's a GTK based application that looks beautiful within KDE Neon. You can't say the the same uh, always with various apps when you flip it around and you're in a, you know, I'll pick on GNOME again, GNOME desktop and you install a QT based app, it doesn't always show up and blend in well with the OS and I think Plasma does an exceptionally good job there. You go in and change the window decorations here and again get new window decorations. Just a few small examples. I'll also move over here to fonts because I want to really pinpoint a few things here. I recently installed and used for two days Pop! OS. People really like that OS and in the beginning I thought really I mean it's Ubuntu with some theming but it's more than that it really is. It's uh, the installer is very professional. I believe they're using like the elementary software manager and some other things there and it also felt faster than the last time I used Ubuntu. But one of the areas where I was really disappointed with Pop! OS was the font rendering on my particular monitor LCD monitor and system it was really not good. I mean, I had to really spend a lot of time going in tweaking and it still didn't look anywhere near as good as what I get by default out of the box with KDE Neon or Zubuntu for that matter. But here you can adjust all of your fonts, add new fonts, and out of the box, the font rendering with Plasma has been exceptional. Icons, I want to talk about that for a minute as well. And again, you want new icons, you can get it right here within settings. You can also get those icons within Discover. But the icons that you apply within Plasma seem to apply more thoroughly and better than I find in many of the GTK-based desktop environments. And so that's just one of those things. And I, again, I've tried them all. I've spent time with all of them. And I know that it depends on the icon pack itself, but for the more complete icons, and what I mean by that is when you go through, actually, let's do it over here and do it this way. Uh, we'll go to the application dashboard. So this is just illustrating another option that you have for a launcher. And there's a multitude of launchers. You could get, um, you know, the simple menu that we have here. Get a dock here at the bottom. So you've got Latte Dock. I should have set that up for the video because it's it's exceptionally done. But if you just scroll through here, and this is Tela. This is the icon set Tela. And I got to say too that the Plasma icons 
uh, default plasma icons look very professional out of the box. All these sets that I've applied just apply extremely well within plasma. So theming and tweaking, customization in general, KDE Plasma is king there. So uh, quality apps and components. And I want to talk about that because KDE has a slew of apps. In fact, I recently did a video where, you know, just talking about where K the KDE team has released several of their apps within the Microsoft Windows Store um, for use. And, you know, kind of debating, is that good? Is that bad? Or um, some of you just don't care. Several high quality KDE apps and Kden Live is one that, you know, will stand out and there are many others. And that's something where there's continued development. Again, with the KDE development team, the progress and the pace at which things are being developed is, is really, I think, one of the strongest uh, going now. Now now that GNOME is in with Ubuntu, there's you know, lots of activity there, but I don't think anyone's able to keep up with the pace that you find from the KDE team. Really good quality apps and components all built in to um, to KDE Plasma. And within KDE Neon, that's one of the things that I want to talk about as well. If you go into settings, for example, everything that you see here um, is set up in a way that gives you control. So instead of, um, let's say within GNOME, where they remove things or say, hey, we feel like it needs to be done this way and you should like it because we say so, and okay, there's workarounds, but you got to go find these workarounds. And they don't make it easy to change some of the things that they have set by default. And I think KDE is the opposite there. I think they listen to their users more than maybe the GNOME developers do, for example, uh, because they give you that freedom of choice. Hey, we do it this way out of the box, but here's how you can go and change that. Or here's where you can tweak that if you like it uh, to be a different way. And I feel like they want to make it easier for you to do that versus making it harder for you to do that. So that's another big plus with KDE Neon. We talked about font rendering. We talked about how well it works with GTK apps. Let's talk about another area that I used to have issues with, and that's Discover. When Discover was first launched, it was very slow, clunky, uh, just wasn't put together well. I think personally that it was released too soon. Been several uh, updates and now it's fast, it's fluid, it's organized, and it does a very good job of managing not only your applications, but application add-ons and plasma add-ons. So here's another source if you wanted to change your color schemes, decorations, fonts. You can do all of that right here from within Discover as opposed to going through a web browser or a third-party application store or something like that. You've got it all just lined up for you right here. So we could go pop right over to icons, sort by rating, and one-click install. You've also got uh, flat pack support as well as snap support built right into Discover. So this is a real highlight of KDE Neon. Another reason for KDE Neon, and I talked about it a little bit earlier, and that is, this is built off of Ubuntu and the stable release of Ubuntu. So you've got stability, of course, it's in the name. Uh, stability, you've got a large development community around that base. And so you want that stable base because if you're going to use something as your daily driver, as your go-to working OS, you don't want crashes. You don't want updates to break things. And my experience with KDE Neon is that it has been extremely stable. And I love the fact that it doesn't come with a lot of software pre-installed. I know many of you, um, you install a system, you get it set up, and you might use that for six months, a year, or five years, uh, maybe adding or removing an application or package here or there. But for the most part, you leave it set. I don't. I just get crazy wild hairs and I will swap out my main and, you know, then keep coming back to something like KDE Neon here. But when you do that, I like to build it up from scratch. There was nothing under games. Under graphics, you had GwynView and Ocular. Under internet, you only had Firefox. Uh, multimedia only had VLC Media Player. I've installed everything else. Uh, office, there was nothing there other than Ocular. And you had your settings, system settings, and, and that was about it. You had Discover, Dolphin, 
Info Center Console, and K Wallet Manager. Under Utilities, um, I think you only had K Notes and K Write and Spectacle. That was it. So a very, very minimal install as far as what's pre-installed. Again, allowing you to build your system as you see fit. So you've got that flexibility, customization, the stability, the speed, frequent updates, lots of activity on the KDE desktop side for Plasma. You start combining all of that and hopefully you see, or maybe I've painted a picture as to why I think KDE Neon should be my distro selection for 2019. At any rate, I appreciate you watching the video, and we will check you later.